let's take a look down under with this week's Fish Eye View, sponsored by Mercury, number one on the water. At one time, the only way to catch steelhead was bottom bouncing. It wasn't until 1970 that someone first attempted to float fish for them. The method immediately produced spectacular results. To this day, it remains the number one technique for catching these great fish. It's all about keeping bait in the strike zone while drifting naturally with the current and staying above rocks that eat up time and tackle. That said, it's a mystery why so many experts allocate too much distance between float and bait, causing things to dredge along bottom. Fact is, steelhead prefer to hit a target and at eye level or slightly above. When it comes to terminal tackle, most overdo things. Too large a float, a necklace of weights, swivels, and so on. You could eat lunch or catch a couple in the time it takes them to retie. In our experience, it's best to simplify, up to four sinkers at most. Instead of a weak point, spool up with leader material. To get the most out of every drift, make that float work harder for you. Drag it to stall out a drift and wave bait in their faces. Experiment fearlessly by exercising that float even more. It may look ridiculous, but who could argue with success? Not that long ago, steelhead fishing in the Great Lakes was strictly a spring ritual. Because it's spawning season, they were seldom at their best. Even when done and recovering, they still left a bit to be desired. These days, anglers are better informed and realize that autumn steelhead are a completely different animal. Having lived the good life in big water, they arrive hardy, strong, and bright. Depending on conditions, they can run anytime following the last heat wave of August. With reproduction months away, they feed actively, and the number one item on the menu is salmon eggs. A West Coast thing, steelhead are programmed from birth to eat this highly nutritious food. That's why eggs and imitations outfish anything else. Wherever you find both, you'll find a direct link between fall runs of salmon and steelhead. With or without rain, look for a drop in barometric pressure to trigger an influx of the big fish. Once that happens, you can be sure the steelhead will be hot on their heels. To find them, try spotting a pot of salmon, then concentrate your efforts just downstream from that point. A surefire way to take autumn steelhead is to locate ripe female salmon. Without disturbing the salmon, work your bait in the vicinity and get ready for serious steelhead action. During the past 20 years of underwater filming, we conducted a thorough investigation of steelhead. During that time, we observed some interesting behavior. Shy of moving cameras, most of our steelhead footage is taken from a stationary position, virtually eliminating traditional drift fishing techniques. Rather than a limitation, we enjoy a distinct advantage few anglers capitalize on. During prime time, early morning for instance, steelhead often hit as fast as you can get it down to them. When the action slows, as it always does, you have to wait them out. Leaving bait in place for as long as possible is the key. Quite often, one fish will show interest, thereby triggering another into hitting. With row, we add styrofoam to keep things visible to the camera and to the fish. In this case, it's just styrofoam, minus any fish eggs. Changing colors of row bag material is always a good idea. Sooner or later, however, they will figure things out. After that, you may only interest smaller fish. That brings us to the greatest trick we've witnessed in steelheading, unnatural motion. Try bouncing the bait or go against the current. Need more proof? This steelhead is completely oblivious to our roll bag. Now, add a bit of movement and watch what happens.